communication service providers. They are facing a series of challenges, but also have a great ton of opportunities from network transformation, acceleration, changing customer demand, or you can think about things like 5G, like cloud, like edge and AI opportunities. So some great food for conversation with our telecom expert today. Today, we're talking to Bill Lamberson. He's the Global Director of Cloud, 5G, and Edge in Telecommunication Media at IBM. And he is here to deep dive into these topics. Welcome, Bill. Thank you, Ronald. Appreciate being here. Very, very happy to join you today. Yeah, we're glad to have you over here. So what we see is that the telecom service industry is, is changing very fast. And we see also the business models changing fast. Can you give one or maybe multiple examples, how telecom service providers are keeping up? Yeah, sure, Ronald. That's that's a great question. Um, and the first thing is take a look at what we're doing here, right? Working from home and, and being able to um, and, and have a remote workforce. And I think that the, the COVID-19 pandemic really accelerated the need for digital transformation for operators. And, um, you know, one of the things for certain that we saw as an advantage for, for those operators that were embracing, you know, digital customer engagement, virtual chatbots and self-service capabilities was their ability to adapt very quickly to the new influx of traffic from the work at home workforce. And as an example, you know, we worked with, with, um, many global operators, including Vodafone, where they have a, a chatbot service called Toby. Um, operator in the United States, uh, CenturyLink Lumen, has a significant deployment of, of um, virtual agent capabilities from IBM. And, and these are just a couple of examples of operators that were very, able to very quickly respond you know, to the new demands around uh, work from home. So digital transformation um, is being accelerated. I also think that the business model is changing in the way that operators are looking for new sources of revenue. Um, I think on the subscriber side of the equation, Consumer subscribers are pretty flat and um, if not declining. And so operators are recognizing that they need to really look to new opportunities in the enterprise space. So we see operators focused on on providing new cloud-based network services to their enterprise customers, things like SD-WAN services and virtual CPE. And we see um, other operators focused on the area of edge computing as an entree into the enterprise space. So T-Mobile, as an example, in the U.S. has been a a very successful operator in the consumer space. And they are making a significant shift to really um, to to invest in the enterprise space and and enterprise opportunities. Um, And then I think last is when I mentioned edge, as you start to move up the value chain, operators want to be able to capture more than just connectivity. And they want to deliver a rich set of edge use cases in the areas of like industry 4.0 and, um, and you know, manufacturing and retail for edge. And so we're doing a lot of work with Verizon in the United States, um, where we're s- focusing on 5G and edge and delivering a set of industry 4.0 capabilities in the manufacturing space. And operators need to have partnerships in order to be able to do that. And they don't have the skills or the resources or the investment to be able to have um, the ability to deliver the full stack. And they recognize that partnerships are important. So these are just some examples of how I see the, the business model changing. As next to the business model change, we see also different possibilities for cloud models. What type of cloud models do you see in the market? And can you give some examples how different models are applied in different situations? Sure, sure. So I think, you know, traditionally, over the last several years, operators were mostly focused on virtualization. And many CIOs and CTOs were measured on the number of systems virtualized within their organizations. That's changing dramatically. We're starting to see a significant shift from uh, private cloud to public cloud. Um, and although when I say a shift to public cloud, what I mean is, is that operators are more willing to adopt public cloud for parts of their of their um, network and IT estate. But it's not an all or nothing. We really believe at IBM that hybrid cloud is, is what's going to be required, and especially so in the, in the telecommunication space. You know, as operators start to move from a virtual network and virtual network functions to cloud native based or container based network functions, it's important to leverage uh, public cloud or next generation distributed cloud solutions. 
And this needs to be done in a hybrid uh, capacity. And, and let me tell you why. Um, so first of all, if we just take the network as an example, there are various aspects um, or domains within the network space. So you might have your core network, you might have your access layer, or your virtual RAN, you may even have far edge uh, components in your network. And all of these different workloads require, you know, different landing platforms. Um, you won't, you know, you probably won't run very often anyway, your virtual RAN in a public cloud property. But you would like to leverage the public cloud tooling, the public cloud as a service offerings, the public cloud management uh, for those virtual RAN instances, maybe at the distributed unit or DU level at least. And as you start to go into more of the central, or I'm sorry, at the central unit um, or CU at, at, at least, but you may also want to look at the opportunity to do standalone deployments of, of the DU in a more of a private cloud fashion. Um, other factors that affect the, the need for hybrid are things like regulatory and data sovereignty laws. So some operators operate in multiple countries, and um, in some of the smaller countries, there's not always an option for a public cloud property, and operators are not able to allow a lot of the data to leave countries. You know, when you look at the um, continent of Africa as an example, that's a, a very, very um, a significant challenge. So you want to be able to deploy um, within your network on premise uh, and have the same level of, of public cloud services available to you on premise. And I mentioned that um, you know the word distributed cloud and uh, IBM has a, an offering called IBM Cloud Satellite, which is our distributed cloud solution for network and edge. And it gives operators the ability to extend the IBM public cloud resources, services and support down to an on-prem in-network deployment. So we see um, a significant increase in the, the consumption of public cloud, um, and that's going to happen very, very quickly. Uh, but we also see the, the requirement for hybrid assets. And those are a couple of examples. Yeah, some great examples. One technology I would like to address as well is the 5G. And everybody knows there's a lot of opportunity for 5G. But it also requires a whole range of equipment and solutions where you can think about devices, about different platform applications and, and many more items. What do you see as the main domains where telco should be investing to accelerate their deployment? Yeah, so Ronald, great, great question. And let me, if you don't mind, let me take a kind of a step back because I think operators need to prepare for 5G, 5G first and then accelerate. And let me explain a little bit about what I mean. Um, so operators need to move to a cloud operating model to really support at scale uh, 5G networks. They need to virtualize, they need to move to a cloud native or container-based service so that they can get the um, benefits from CI CD pipelines and tooling and agile development and deployment. So that's kind of one thing. Uh, they also need to automate massively at scale um, e everywhere you can. They need to have an orchestration engine that's suitable for deploying and managing network workloads and um, network functions and being able to do at scale automated zero touch service assurance and closed loop orchestration. And they need to be able to have these kinds of things in place uh, as they start to really scale out their 5G deployments. because. As we all know, ultimately, the number of cell sites that are going to be required to cover the millimeter wave um, services from 5G, the high bandwidth services, is going to be significantly greater than the number of cell sites that operators have today. And there's also going to be a large number of in-building cell sites that are going to be required just because of the technology itself. It doesn't um, penetrate buildings very well. So what that means is you're going to have a large number more of or order of magnitude more of, of cell sites, and you have to be operating at cloud scale to support these. You need to be able to virtualize the RAN. And I do think, to answer your question specifically, what is the area where operators should focus mostly on to accelerate? I think it is in the RAN area. I think the, the industry has done a good job virtualizing and cloud enabling a lot of the core network components. And the next major opportunity, massive scale opportunity is at the RAN side. And I use the term virtual RAN because 
there's a lot of different ways to approach it. Open RAN is one of them. Um, you know, a full stack from a network equipment provider might be another one. And, and IBM supports both of those scenarios. Um, but we do think that virtualizing the RAN, moving it to a cloud platform um, with a, you know, a, a virtual or cloud native infrastructure management um, solution and being able to be able to deliver at scale those network functions um, out to the, the cell sites and the, and the DU locations is, is important. So that's where I see the, the most focus. And I think if operators do that well, it can also set them up very successfully for being able to monetize solutions at the edge um, through, you know, through 5G edge or local 5G services and monetizing for enterprise and monetizing for consumer space. So the RAN is, is the, the area of opportunity that we see in the next you know, 12 to, to 24 months. Yeah, interesting view. One last topic I would like to raise is the change in the consumer behavior. Consumers consume more and more streaming type of services. Um, how should telcos anticipate on this on this trend for the OTT? Yeah, well, I think I think just um, I think the OTTs represent uh, an opportunity and a broader challenge than just the streaming side. Because when I think of OTTs, I also think about the um, disruption. That they're they potentially pose, and um, so I think it's a double-edged sword for for operators. One side of the sword is they they absolutely need to and should strike strategic partnerships with the OTTs and the hyperscalers because they have you know they have massive market share, they have a massive customer base, and they have destinations that the telco subscribers want to get to. Um, and in the world of 5G and Edge, it will be important to be able to have a rich set of capabilities on a public cloud provider. But the problem is, is that if you look historically as what has happened over the last 10 plus years in other adjacent industries, and you take the media industry as one, um, the traditional media space has been completely disrupted by some of the hyperscalers. And not only the distribution of the content, but you know, billions of dollars a year are being invested in the creation of content. Um, and that, that has completely disrupted the media industry. And um, I see this potential playing out again in the telecommunications space. We know I've been in telco 30 years, and I saw many of the, of the challenges that our industry has faced. If you just look back at the um, area of text messaging or SMS services, um, you know, you took a hundred billion dollar industry um, that the telcos were, you know, were receiving good revenue from, and it basically disappeared overnight, and it went to the Androids and the and the WhatsApps and the, and the iPhone as an example. That can happen again in the in the telecommunication space, especially at the edge. It doesn't take a lot for you to envision that if a hyperscaler has a position in a telco's network and they are seated at the edge um, and they can understand what the subscribers are doing, where the traffic is going, who the ARPU customers are, what are the, the content locations that, that customers want to go to. It doesn't take much for somebody to think about how a hyperscaler could disenfranchise or disintermediate an operator by providing that, that last mile. And whether it be private LTE or private 5G or fiber or whatever, or other kinds of wireless technology. So I often get engaged in, with operators in this discussion, and I understand and agree that partnering with a hyperscaler or an over-the-top provider is, is important. Just do it with your eyes wide open. Recognize that they often view you know, the beachfront property that, op that the telcos have as being very valuable. And the most inval valuable asset that operators have are their customers. So um, that's just my little feeling about what's happening with the potential of disruption and how I see operators engaging with over-the-top providers and what they should be looking out for. Yeah, should adapt to this change. It's always a challenge, but I think the challenge is even getting better, bigger, as you mentioned, with this different competitors in the market. Bill, thanks a lot for sharing your latest developments on, in the telecom domain. And for the audience, thank you for watching, and we see you next time. Thank you, Ronald. You're welcome.